it's like about 9.30 and I, I just woke up. I took a nap. I was so tired I couldn't stay up. I had a strange dream this on, on there by some... There was some complex of places, of houses and concrete buildings and things by a, a lake somewhere. But anyway, during this dream I had this idea about a piece of software that it was the way the software worked in a dream. But then I thought about it a bit more and at first I thought, well, that's just a multiplex channel. And then a bit more later I thought, oh, maybe this will work for, for um, some sort of SPI processing, distributed processor communicating using SPI. And then, so what, what, what it, the idea was just basically that you, you take seven bit ordinary 7-bit ASCII as your your um, channels as your data messages and you, you you queue up some number of them until you get a, a higher than a top bit set on one of the, the inputs and that top bit set means that the rest of the, the other seven bits are um, are numbers of characters uh, are indexes into the stack that you've got that you've got so far to send so you've you've, you've got a buffer that's pushing uh, sort of push down a list of, with up to seven messages and then the top then you're going to set the top bit of some of those, which is going to go through the, the, the data that's on your stack already, the seven bits of the seven bytes on your stack, and it's going to set the top bit. So it's saying which ones are channel numbers. And then it's then it's then the idea was to reinterpret those messages again. And there was some way I thought that you could actually incorporate operators. You could incorporate operators into that. Those those second seven bits could they could be how to distribute the the actual computation they could be by sending it to different other channels because then parts of this become yeah but then it, or, or otherwise I was just going to say otherwise you you take the the top bit when, when you get a top bit set character, it means everything in the buffer up to that point will get sent on the channels which are given by the other, the other seven bits. So you can send the same message on multiple channels by sending something like um, seven, three, which would send it on channel one and two at the same time. So it's kind of your, your go command once you've built up a message. It's quite amusing to think of a series of co of co you could you could probably presumably write excuse me, write this in Go quite quickly. To allow you to to pipe messages around. Maybe that would be Maybe that would work nicely for these kinds of state machines, which I was trying to um, I wanted state machines to, to, to do things like pulse LEDs nicely with slow rise and fall times and things. And you do that by by putting things into buffers.
I wasted so much paper doing stupid writing. Has to be done every now and then. You have to turn yourself into a psychic comedian. These kinds of processes. That that one is for um, randomizing random numbers. Um, you you receive bits, and then you output noughts or ones depending on on which way you go. You output zeros. I think this is zero colon one and this is one colon zero. I'm not sure anyway. The idea is that you can stack those together multiply so that this this just counts if you've got a random number generator that's producing Predominantly noughts, say it goes no 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 one no 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 one no one no 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 one. You can normalize it by outputting the parity bit whenever it changes from outputting a string of noughts to outputting a string of ones, and you can you can actually stack those up together. You get slower output, you get slower bit production, but you you get it much more normal in the sense of um, much closer to 50-50, naught or one. But the other thing that I wanted to be able to do with these picos, this is to program these. Yeah, I pulled that wire out the other day. I can't remember where it, where it went. Fortunately, I've got some video of it. I can just stop the video and have a look. Um, yeah, I wanted to be able to, to program, I want to be able to assemble, to generate assembly code to, to run those state machines like I just showed on that piece of paper, and other more complex transition systems which did things like count down and to get an LED to to pulse using um, PWM using the PWM output because then I've got sort of roughly 250 different voltage levels to cycle through to produce a, an LED that goes blip 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 but then another machine, for example, would take a, a byte in from the input and output it in Morse code using using a nice beep, 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 a nice chirped PWM output that that produced a nice blink, not a not a just a boring digital square wave blink. There's so many ways of blinking an LED. Once you get to this kind of optical music that you could you could be writing, opticals you could, everything that you do with synthesizers has an analog in the, in um, flashing LEDs. That's why I think it's so st boring that they um, those Christmas light LED strings. I can't believe that they. They so use all those resources for f just for a sequence of mind-numbing patterns. I when I was in Bolivia, it drove me mad that they covered the trees in those things. We could have done so much. So hopefully someone in Bolivia now has got a stack of Raspberry Pi 2050s. And and you know, you saw that, uh, that adapter driver, that LED driver for the light strings. You need to work out just how to interface that. That to it, and then you can start doing proper light shows. Oh, there's so much we could have done there.
I found the book. I found the technical his. Um, I like uh, scientific biographies. I really enjoyed that biography of Tiger Brahe. Tycho Brahe, Brahe, the the first kind of the first astronomer, observation astronomer. And this looks equally good. It's an interesting projection. This is the one responsible for everyone thinking that Greenland is bigger than North America. Don't think he was Danish or Viking or 